You want to know why animal-based diets aren't as embraced as they once were? We discovered insulin. And, I mean, it's such a shame that something that was life-saving. Look, when insulin came around, and especially for those people with the autoimmune disease of type 1 diabetes, it was a miracle that they were able to have insulin for that purpose. The problem is they started using insulin not just with type 1 diabetes, but people with type 2 diabetes. And okay, we'll have a mixed diet and then it's a little more uh, palatable. You'll enjoy it more. And I'm thinking, have you had just a meat-based diet? Like, I have never been on a more enjoyable diet in my entire life. Yes, I get it. If you're used to eating bread and you're used to eating sweet and you're used to eating you know, kind of a variety, it can be weird when you first start on a carnivore diet. But look, once you get on it, the methodicalness of it of, okay, well, what meat am I going to eat today? Okay, what mixture of meats am I going to have today? Uh, you know, can I throw an egg on top of a steak and, and cook that? Like, it's not as bad as people want to make it out to be. They think that it's kind of a prison sentence to have to just eat meat, just eat animal foods. Not me. I've been on enough low-fat diets in my life, you guys, and I know a lot of you have as well, that getting to eat meat and full fats, that is luxurious compared to all those low-fat diets that I used to have to go on and eating rice cakes and bland, fat-free everything and lean meats and being hungry. The satiety you get, the satisfaction you get with the taste in this, especially if you've got a grill, and you can you can smoke some meat. Oh, it's just why. And it all started with the invention of and discovery of insulin. Isn't that interesting? Although several contemporary treatments for obesity or type two diabetes promote high intake of meat and fat, things like the Atkins diet, these types of diets typically include or reintroduce after a short period of time the consumption of low carb vegetables and low sugar fruits. Whereas a recent perspective suggests that all essential nutrients can actually come from a carnivore diet. It, and that's true. If you eat nose to tail and you don't just eat the muscle meats, you actually add in a lot of the offal, as they call it, O-F-F-A-L, all the little bits and pieces, the liver, the brain, the heart, all of those things, um, can provide you with literally all the nutrition you want. People often say that. I was at the farmer's market a couple months back and I had 20 pounds of grass-fed beef. And the lady's like, well, where's your vegetables? Where's your, and I'm like, oh, I eat a carnivore diet. What's that mean? Oh, I only eat animal foods. And she's like, where do you get your vitamins from? Where do you get your this from? Where do you get your that from? And I'm like, it's all in the meat. I mean, let's not pretend like it's just a blob of protein and fat. It's more than that. And the sooner people realize that, especially when you get it from a quality source like a grass-fed uh, cow, it's totally good for you. Therefore, the aim of this study was to characterize the motivation, the diet patterns, the self-perceived health status, the satisfaction of a large group of adults habitually consuming a carnivore diet and thereby to provide insights into this poorly characterized dietary approach. All right, so the design of the study, they used an online survey. They collected self-reported data from respondents who self-identified as a carnivore diet adherent for a minimum of six months. The aim was to characterize the diet consumed by the participants to describe perceived health status and changes in health since they started on the diet, uh, uh, to assess the perceived symptoms of any nu nutrient deficiencies or other adverse effects, and to evaluate the satisfaction and acceptance of consuming a carnivore diet. This study was approved by the Boston College Hospital Institutional Review Board. Electronic consent was obtained by all of the participants in the study. There was no restriction on the data use. The only identifiable data that was collected were their email addresses. These were removed um, upon completion of the data collection and eliminating duplicate responses. So they kept it pretty, uh, pretty private, but at the same time got quality uh, information. Pause a second, because my water machine is making a very loud buzz and it is distracting my brain. So I'll be right back, hang tight.
sometimes I have to give that thing a whack to make it stop buzzing. So <laughs> forgive me for that. All right, I'm going to get back to the study. So let's look at the methods used. Uh, uh, so we just looked at the design. Let's look at the participants and enrollment. Respondents were recruited from open social media communities, including the World Carnivore Tribe on Facebook, uh, Instagram. Uh, they found various carnivore people on Instagram. Uh, the Zero Carn B Reddit page, the Zeroing In on Health Facebook page, Twitter, and then other sources. So they went around. They didn't just stick with one group. They went around the various groups online to find the carnivore people. Inclusion criteria, they required you to be at least 18 years old and you should be consuming a carnivore diet for at least six months by self-report. Following a two elig eligibility question, a link to the study survey was displayed and then sent by email. They gave three reminders provided over a one month period. Survey data acquisition was conducted between March 30th and June 24th, 2020. As such, data collection occurred right at the period of the beginning of the, of the pandemic when most people were in lockdown. Of the initial 3,883 respondents, 1,418 were excluded due to their age, uh, diet duration, incomplete screening information, declining to participate, and then not starting the survey. Most of them in, in the, the decline, they just never did the survey. They got accepted to be a part of the study and then 1,058 of them decided, eh, I'm not gonna fill out the survey. So why did you sign up for it if you didn't wanna take the survey? Duplicate survey responses were identified on the basis of email addresses and deleted. There was 28 of those. Participants who did not provide at least a diet start date and food intake frequency information, 126 people in that category, uh, and whose diet start date was within six months of study participation, which was 282 of them, all of those were excluded. So they took out all of the confounding variables of people that did not actually qualify to be in the study. So by the time they eliminated all those people, there were a total of 2,029 respondents eligible and willing to participate to provide sufficient information to be included in the study. Look, over 2,000 people, that's pretty good. They were able to follow some patterns there. All right, what were the data collection and treatment survey instruments? Uh, data were collected and managed with research, electronic data capture. Um, survey questions were developed in consultation with members of the carnivore diet community and addressed several domains, uh, which we've talked about some of those things, the diet satisfaction, any medical conditions, frequency of eating, blah, blah, blah. Multiple choice questions were used to solicit specific habits, the reasons why they chose the diet, the medical conditions, and their medication intake. Uh, modified Likert scales were used to determine the frequency of intake of various food categories and other such things. Highest educational attainment was categorized as primary school or less, secondary, post-secondary, or tertiary. Participants were asked to specify their income category as either lower, middle, or upper. And this is interesting because a lot of people look at the carnivore diet and they think it's only an upper class type of diet because people that don't have money can't afford to buy meat is what they say. So that's interesting, they, they broke that down. Race and ethnicity were also self-reported with various multiple choice and free text options. Self-reported anthropometric and lab data were collected uh, within one to five years respectively before the diet, present within a year of taking the survey, and then at least three months after starting the carnivore diet. Participants were asked to specify source of all the data uh, as clinician or self-measured, and the data were then prioritized in that order. So they're getting their ducks in a row uh, of what they were looking at here. All right, so the units of the measure, we don't really need to go over that because they're looking at all the different things they tested and then how they tested it. They did throw in ketone testing, so beta-hydroxybutyrate was in there, C-reactive protein, some of the, the various things. All right, da 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 da, -da. They also calculated BMI. Da, 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 da. All right, that's some of the weed stuff. All right. A lot of people ask me, Jimmy, how do you get 
such good deep sleep. Well, there's a lot of things that I do, but one of the newest things that I recently added is this upgraded magnesium from a company called Upgraded Formulas. Go to their website, upgradedformulas.com, and you can learn all about this nano uh, technology that they use for this particular mineral of magnesium. Again, it's called Upgraded Magnesium, and it's got all the different forms of magnesium in it using the nanotechnology so it gets absorbed a lot better. Guys, I have seen my deep sleep improve by as much as 30 to 40% simply by adding in this product along with sunshine exposure, darkness in the room, cooler temperature, all of the things that I always have done. So again, upgradedformulas.com is the website. Go check them out. Now we're at the, the fun part of the study. What were the results? The participants' uh, description, most respondents were from the United States, Canada, Europe, or Australia. 67% were male, 83% were white and non-Hispanic, 64% completed college or a college equivalent. Income spanned all classes with 14% reporting being in the low class of income, 66% being in the middle class, and 20% being high income. Seven women were pregnant and 10 were breastfeeding uh, at 12 months postpartum in the study. The median time uh, following the carnivore diet was 14 months. 93% of the participants said the reason they went on the carnivore diet was to get healthy. So the food intake, um, red meat other than pork, beef, lamb, venison, uh, buffalo, and goat was the most commonly consumed food followed by eggs, as well as non-dairy, non-milk dairy, poultry, pork, and seafood were eaten less often. Yeah, I eat some pork. I love, I've got a pork sausage I get from the farmer at the farmer's market. Um, I'm not a big fan of chicken just because it kind of makes me hungry, although I do have a rotisserie every once in a while. And then seafood, I have a love-hate with seafood. When I want seafood, I have seafood. But when I do have seafood, I almost invariably get hungry. Even with the so-called fatty fish, it just, I, I get hungry from eating seafood. So I would probably fall in that category of least often eating that. Weekly or more frequent consumption was reported for organ meats by 42%, for non-milk dairy by 72%. Less than 10% of respondents consumed starchy vegetables, non-starchy vegetables, fruits or grains more often than once a month. 37% reported no use of any vitamin supplements at all. Use of other over-the-counter supplements that are dietary, herbal, digestive enzymes, and antioxidants was then denied by 75% of the people in the study. Alcohol rarely consumed. 76% reported frequency of less than once a month or never of drinking alcohol. More than 50% of the participants drank coffee at least daily. In contrast to the typical Western standard American diets, few individuals following the carnivore diet reported consuming any fast food. I know there's some people that do carnivore, they'll go to McDonald's and they'll just ask for the burger patties or uh, on the West Coast, I know a lot of the West Coasters, they uh, they go to In-N-Out Burger and uh, what what is that, the Flying Dutchman they get? So it's like burger, cheese, another burger, um, so yeah, I mean, there's different, uh, different people that do it different ways, but that's interesting, uh, that most of them didn't go with fast food. Uh, what's really fascinating, over half of them drank coffee at least daily. Um, there was this debate among kind of the purists in the carnivore space that, oh, well, if you're carnivore, you don't drink coffee. That's from a bean. That's a plant. And it's like, I think if you get to that level of carnivore strictness, um, you're, no, <laughs> don't do that. Like give people their coffee. Come on. Most rep uh, participants reported eating one to three times a day. I eat twice a day. Uh, differentiation between meals and snacks was not uh, queried. 16% of the people in the study had three meals a day. 64% were in the category that I eat twice a day. 17% once a day. Generally, more participants reported choosing cuts of meat with high or moderate fat. 61% got high fat.